Welcome to the Rain Dance Film Festival and to the Q&A for Antarctica, which I'm the pleasure of hosting. It's a world premiere and we've got Keith Bearden, the director, and it stars Chloe Levine and Kimi Muroya. Hi guys. Hello. I hope you're okay on this day. <laughs> we all know what's happening in the world at the moment. But let's concentrate on this Q&A for the next 20 to 30 minutes. I will start with some questions and then we, uh, we will jump on the audience. They will be uh, able to ask some more questions. So let's uh, just start talking about you, Keith. You're yeah. an accomplished uh, commercials and shorts director with a previous feature film under your belt. Yeah. Which you shot 10 years ago starring Kim Cattrall. Uh, so how uh, did you come to this film, Antarctica? Well, um, I, in 2014, I broke my leg uh, at attending a friend's uh, screening, Signa Bauman, who's a wonderful uh, Latvian American filmmaker. And um, I was trapped for a summer, unable to walk. And New York is very difficult if you're uh, disabled in any way. Uh, and so I got very depressed and I wrote this script in about six weeks. And, uh, you know, I had thought about making a project about sort of smart, funny, young women and, and all the kind of amazing women I've known in real life and like the kind of intimacy of female friendship. But um, I guess I owe it all to a, a, a terrible injury. <laughs> um, and uh, I kind of spat it out in about six weeks. And then um, I just started sending it around to all the young, the youngest women I, I knew, you know, uh, people's kids and, and friends of friends. And uh, they all sort of responded really well to it. So I thought, well, maybe I have something. Um, and, you know, it made the rounds in the agencies and got a lot of good response. and. A lot of people wanted to be in it, but everybody was kind of uh, a little hesitant about some of the political stuff in it. So um, it just took a while to make. I mean, movies take a while to make anyway, but uh, everybody was like, oh, we love it, but uh, it, can you cut out this and can you cut out that? And does, does Janet need to be Asian and all this kind of stuff? So um, it took a while to find the right producers who were uh, you know, ready and willing and, uh, to, to take a risk. So, and was, was it all New York based, the production and? Uh, yeah, pretty much. I mean, I talked to producers all over. I talked to producers in London and, and, uh, and LA, but it wound up being all New York based. I mean, um, we had a few talent from Los Angeles that flew up, but mostly everybody's sort of that area. I mean, that's where I'm based. And we shot in what's called Hudson Valley, which is like an hour north of New York City, which just looks like sort of everywhere USA. Um, and we used a bunch of local actors, but most of the actors came from New York City or that kind of area, so. And uh, this is a film about growing up fast before the end of high school, but at its core, we have this beautiful portrait of a friendship. And this is beautifully portrayed by Kimi and Chloe. So I'm coming to you guys. Uh, can you talk to us about your, the casting process? How did these, these roles come to you on your radar? This kind of thing. Chloe first, maybe? Oh, okay, well, okay. Um, I was sent the script from my agent and I was immediately in love with it. And I had a chance to meet Keith and I was like, you know, immediately taken with Keith I mean, I'm sorry you're like right here Keith. but um no it's fine then, <laughs> and then we did a chemistry read uh I did a chemistry with, read with Kimmy and uh it was like I don't know how you feel about this Kimmy but as soon as you walked in I was like okay like we're friends <laughs> um that's her yeah <laughs> I was just super nervous because I was an hour late because of rain. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think, we, we, I, I think I kicked you, Kimmy, when you were an hour late. Do you remember that? 
<laughs> and uh, how how did it, did the role come to you, Kimi? Um, so I actually I don't have an agent. Uh, this is my first uh, film. Um, I'm primarily theater actor, regional work in Philadelphia, and um, I had a friend from college who was on backstage. I wasn't even on backstage because I'm a lazy actor, and uh, she sent me the um, the posting for it, the audition notice. And so I made a backstage account and I submitted and then it kind of sat in Keith's inbox for like a year. <laughs> and then he finally uh, reached out to me and was like, are you still interested? I was like, yes. So he sent me a script. I was like, okay, yeah, definitely very interested. Um, and then I shot a self tape of a couple of scenes and then sent it off to Keith and then had a call back and then a couple of chemistry reads. And yeah, and it was great. I was very excited. <laughs> And it seems to me that this film is uh, also about perceptions. So uh, something that can be wrongly viewed as sex addiction, for example, in the case of uh, Kat, but also uh, while the real addiction to pills, the one that Janet has, remains unchallenged. Uh, the different paths that these girls are taking is also what fractured this relationship. Uh, wouldn't you say, uh, Keith? Yeah, it's that's a really interesting point that no I, no one's ever brought up that one has an unacceptable non-addiction and, and is painted that way and one is has an addiction that's doctor prescribed so it's fine. Yeah, I mean, the movie's kind of, to me, it's like, um, I think friendship, especially when you're young, and to me, to my observation, kind of, especially being female, uh, it can almost be like a marriage. And this story is about how they sort of grow apart and it's a bit about a divorce and a reconciliation. And, you know, I sort of wanted to present, uh, you know, I mean, also like you get put in a pecking order when you're young. And if you're sort of remotely, uh, conventionally attractive, you know, uh, for a young woman in America, you're really sexualized and uh, also shamed for that sexualization as well. And if you're like, you know, uppity or don't fit in, people think you're crazy. So it's like Janet, oh, she's acting up even though she has a real reason to act up. So she's crazy. And Kat is not at all uh, a sex addict or even particularly sexual for a high school student, but she has that thrown on her. So, um, you know, and I'm a romantic, so when I want, when people break up, I always want them to come back together. So it's kind of about this sort of, you know, divorce and reconciliation. Um, and it's interesting, um, you know, Kimmy, because she had not been in a movie before, came up pretty early when we were shooting. And I think one of the first things she asked me, she said, you know, is, is, is Janet in love with Kat? And I was like, oh yeah, totally. So it's like this, they have this, this kind of love and uh, you know, she's very protective and it's, you know, I mean, I don't see those themes presented in movies or TV very much, you know, this kind of love affair that's not necessarily sexual or even romantic, but it's this kind of intense, you know, connection, um, you know, and they need each other. I mean, they're both kind of outsiders, you know, they have, they kind of have absentee parents a little bit and for one reason or the other. So, you know, they need each other and that's kind of the only thing they have, so. And there's definitely a sense of kookiness that perm permeates the film. Um, for example, a prime example is when the janitor shoots uh, Janet. Um, uh, this is just not a conventional high school film, is it? No, but it's interesting because when I wrote the script, they were already talking about training, you know, in response to school shootings, which are very, very epidemic in America, they were talking about training janitors to carry guns for real. And so I was like, well, that's a recipe for disaster. So let's put you know, it in the it, film. It, it, <laughs> yeah, so it's, I put it in the film. Yeah, I mean, when you have guns around and people aren't trained, or even if people are trained, uh, you know, guns are a recipe for, for violence and disaster. I mean, you know, so I thought, well, that sort of, you know, I mean, it's like I took the, my sort of observations of young women 
uh, over my lifetime. And I kind of shook him up in my crazy, you know, political imagination and, and Antarctica sort of spilled out, so. Um, Chloe and Kimi, we've got to talk about the scenes that you have with Steve Lipman and Baba Wheeler. Wheeler, Wyler? Um, Wyler. Play Wyler, who stay, play Stevie D and Ryan in the film. So how did you prepare for those scenes? Kimi, do you want to go first? Okay. Um, well, the so... with the spaceman, lovely. Yeah, story. I mean, okay, so um, Bubba is just a, a dream of a human being. He's so, so nice, so kind. And we did pretty much all of those scenes like first up. So like the first four days, uh, I think Chloe was still working on another project and he wasn't even available yet. So we were just doing like Janet and Ryan scenes and Janet and dad scenes. Um, and Bubba was just so instrumental in like <laughs> helping me feel comfortable on set. I remember they originally scheduled our make makeout session where I take my clothes off for the first day of filming. That was quickly moved. Wow, intimidating for your first picture. <laughs> yes. First film was like, mm, thanks, Keith. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I I moved it to the second day. I demanded that that it be moved to the second day. It wasn't my idea. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, um, but no, Bubba was, was so sweet and like so helpful and gave me a lot of like advice and um, just kind of like a very calming presence. So it was like just really well, nice. Well, he comes through as a kind of a, a, a very adorable young man. In the yeah, film. he's a sweetheart. He's a yeah. sweetheart. Um, yeah, and I just, I still adore him to this day. We text sometimes. <laughs> Great. And Chloe? What about Steve, your Steve's with your scenes with Steve? Um, well, Steve is such a lovely and just like a generous actor that we had like so much fun with uh, with our scenes. And I think that on paper, I, the character of Stevie D can come off as such um, <laughs> like a jerk, which he's supposed to, I think. But um, Steve took it in such a sweet. Um, such a sweet take on it that I think just it was really fun to to play with on the day yeah fantastic now Keith we've got to talk about the look of the film which is striking so you worked with uh your production designers Tim Bruno and Alana Ray McDonald and the art director Margie Verghese on the film uh, the the look of the film to me just, I'm just reminded of the bright colors of Blue Velvet, Amelie, all these kind of films. Tell us about the importance of production design in your film. Yeah, I mean, the, really I'm, very, I'm, very, I'm very hands-on with all that stuff with, with, with production design. I kind of have a raise a pretty high bar for my production designers. Um, so, you know, I had a, a, a lookbook on Pinterest from before the movie was greenlit. So I shared that with them. And I'm also really, really open. So, um, you know, Tim and, and Margie and Alana all kind of responded to that, uh, that, that like, you know, I was like, let's all do this together. Like, think of this as your movie too. And I wanted it, you know, it's like um, our second, uh, uh, or our first AC, our assistant camera person, Sharon Park, she, uh, I think she said two things to me during the entire shoot. And one of them was, this movie takes place on Earth too, and I was like, "Well, kind of exactly." So you know, you want this look that says, "I didn't want it to look specifically any time." Like I wanted it's it to a magical be like, look, for sure. Yeah, if you, if you if you grew up in the late seventies or the nineties or the two thousands, like it would all sort of jive for you. So you know, um, and you know, you want to sort of make it visual because movies need to be visual. And, you know, we worked out a color palette. And also I like sort of details that are, you know, the, the sets and, and costumes and production design is all kind of a character. It all informs who these people are, who Kat and Janet are and the world they live in. So all those, those decisions were really important. And, you know, it's fun when people are game to, to really contribute. Um, you know, it's like our DP Madeline Kate Kahn she did lighting and color. She did a chart based on the safety, the emotional safety of the characters 
during each scene. So like, they're like, where's Kat and Janet feel safe? Where do they feel really in danger? And we lit and color graded it differently for that kind of emotional psychological uh, thing in the movie. And it's pretty subtle, but um, I just love that, that that was her idea and she really wanted to understand the story and bring that to it. So um, it's, a fun, it's a fun collaboration. I mean, I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a little dictator sometimes, but I also love collaborating and, and my, uh, the relationship between all three of us on this call was really beautifully collaborative. Um, well, it definitely seems like they, they brought out your vision. So it, it hats off to all the, the, the crew. Absolutely. Um, one last question from me before I open it up to the audience, your lovely Rain Dance audience. Um, some of the best lines in the movie are uttered by the history teacher. Now, <laughs> we've got to talk about this. A month ago, we lost Clark, Mi Clark Middleton, who, uh, as I said, plays the, the history teacher. He was in Twin Peaks, he's done loads of movies. Unfortunately, we lost him quite prematur prematurely. Uh, how did you get to cast him? How was he working with him? Um, well, Clark was suggested. It's funny, Clark auditioned for my first feature, Meet Monica Valor, and I didn't use him. And he came up with our casting director. Our casting director, uh, Mia and Megan, they suggested him. And he read the script. And he called me and he said, I really, really love the script. I just got a question for you. And I was like, what's that? And he's like, you're not serious, are you? And I was like, what? That Ronald Reagan was the greatest president of the 20th century? I was like, no, dude, it's a satire. So he was very concerned that I wasn't some kook who really believed in all this stuff. Oh, so once he, knew it, once, he knew it was, once he knew it was a satire, he really got on board. And he does such a beautiful job with those scenes. A lot of people, when we have test screenings and stuff, say the history teacher is their favorite character outside of the, outside of the girls. And, you know, he just, it was very difficult shooting day. We had so little time in the high school. And at one point he said, this is a very stressful shoot. And I was like, yes, just, just go with it. And, uh, but he did such a beautiful job. He's hilarious and, uh, it was a real blessing to work with him. He's so devoted to his craft, um, you know, and also he was in, you know, he had, uh, he had a long history of arthritis and he, I know he was in pain um, from time to time, but you'd never guess that he was so committed and all in and, you know, in New York City, he's really known as kind of an actor's actors. He worked in every medium possible. He was always game, just a lovely, lovely guy that we lost too soon. And I think Antarctica is his last film. So um, anyway, um, cheers to uh, cheers to Clark. He's, he's cheers I Clark. really wish he could hear the laughter with us, you know, because those scenes, big, big laughs, so. Right, now let's go to the audience. I've got a couple of questions for you guys. Um, Keith, what, uh, tell us about the title. What does it mean? Um, well, um, uh, three things. Uh, Antarctica is, the, is a place where almost nothing is alive because it's so cold. So I thought, well, this world is like Antarctica to these, these characters. It's, there's nothing really alive except them, each other. Um, I thought that it would be the first movie you'd see in the VOD lineup, you know, where if it was alphabetical. And um, uh, full terrible disclosure, uh, there's a Men Without Hats song that I loved as a kid. And the first line is the ice age is here and it's right in your town. And it's called Antarctica. And I was just like, well, somehow it all, it all seemed to work for me. Um, if I knew how many other movies were called Antarctica, I probably wouldn't call it that anymore. But, you know, <laughs> I, it fits. <laughs> it fits, yeah. Um, what was the process for coming up with the Ryan? Sorry. No, sorry. I I think I'm behind and on a bit of delay. Um, but no, I think that Antarctica is also like a lot about um, isolation and how these two girls get like separated and feel very isolated. So that's what yeah. I thought when I was reading the script and everything. So the next question is, what was the process for coming up with the Ryan astronaut 
storyline? Um, I sort of thought, well, what kind of, you know, I mean, okay, this is the, I hope this isn't boring. So I tried to make this movie a few years ago called God Hates Kansas, which uh, obviously with a title like that, it's not an, not an easy movie to make. And the lead character in that script is a heavy older woman. And I met a lot of actors for that part. And, and when I audition actors, I wanna meet them. Like me and Chloe, the first meeting we had was like, she had coffee and I had a margarita. Like we, I like to meet people. And I met all these heavy middle-aged women and they all had incredibly, like they showed me pictures of their mm -hmm. husbands or I met their boyfriend. And they all had these really beautiful husbands, like, like like magazine cover beautiful, boyfriends or husbands. And I was like, holy Moses, this is a story you don't see in movies. You don't see um, fat girls with hot boyfriends. And so that sort of stuck in the back of my mind. And then when I was creating Janet, I thought, well, that could be really interesting. And I was like, who in this high school Antarctica, this desert place would connect with Janet's character? And Janet's character is a little bit you know, ornery and she's a little bit like pushy. And I was like somebody who was kind of a hothouse flower who was like homeschooled or isolated himself. So he's kind of the third, you know, the third element in that triangle between, uh, between Kat and Janet, they're all sort of isolated. And Ryan is isolated because of his, you know, his illness, if there is an illness. Um, so, and I thought that was just really something interesting to explore. Um, and, you know, we auditioned lots of really interesting, very pretty young actors for uh, Ryan. And uh, I got people together and women together and showed them all the auditions and they all picked Bubba. And I think Kimmy texted me when I asked her, she was like, Bubba, Bubba, Bubba. So it's all about their kind of chemistry too, you know? So, um, does that answer the question? Great, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got one more question to both Kimi and Chloe. You're both at the start of your careers. Any advice for young actors starting theirs? Who wants to go first? <laughs> uh, okay. Oh. No, um, I'm on. I'm on a delay. It's awful. But <laughs> um, I think the most important thing is to just keep trying so you go to a lot of auditions and you have to get used to a lot of rejection um and you just but you've got to go out for things that you don't even think that you might not fit for because like people will see you differently than you see yourself people will put you into boxes people will put you into boxes you don't think you fit or that you might not realize that you do fit and um, there's just a lot of fascinating new work out there, both in, in theater and in, you know, obviously film is when we're not making 8,000 remakes. Um, you know, there's a lot of new works, new stories to be told. You just gotta keep trying. Yeah. Great. We don't have any more questions from the audience. So one last question from me. Uh, what's next for all of you? I know that Chloe is about to do a horror movie, which I'm really excited about, right? Oh. Alaska. Uh, oh, yeah, yes. Yes. Well, <laughs> yeah. You want to um, tell us about that? Yeah, so Alaska, we shot about a third of the movie already, and um, that third takes place as um, it's flashbacks for my characters, so... We have yet to shoot the last two thirds of the movie, but um, it's kind of like an interesting, uh, you know, process to wait a little. We're kind of like waiting for me to change, basically. But so you're um, not waiting for the money; you're just waiting for you to change. No, not waiting for the money. That's never a problem. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's about a young girl who goes to Los Angeles to become an actress. Um, and some stuff happened. That's all I can say right now. From Antarctica to Alaska, amazing. Yeah. And then Kimi, what's next for you? Are you doing more theater? Yeah, I had some theater stuff lined up before COVID shut everything down. Um, and, you know, theater's gonna be like one of the last 
things to open up again. So I, yeah, I don't have a whole lot on my plate right now. I'm hoping to maybe transition more into film and television and start uh, looking in that arena while theater gets back up on its feet. And I really enjoyed working on Antarctica. I really enjoyed the medium of film and the challenges that it brought. So I think I would like to do more work in there. I, I think we're all excited to be seeing more of Kimmy and Chloe for sure. <laughs> and lastly, Keith, what are you working on next? Um, I uh, have a big, uh, big-ish uh, sci-fi action comedy with a kind of a, um, a feminist Barbarella that I'm trying to get made um, that a lot of people really responded to the script. Uh, and I'm writing a bunch of, you know, it's like you always, I think everybody sort of bats like maybe one out of three as far as scripts go. So I've got these other little projects. Um, I'm working on a very, very weird sequel to Antarctica, which probably is only a writing exercise. <laughs> um, and I'm working on a, a fake documentary and uh, um, yeah, lots of stuff. So, you know, we'll see. I mean, you know, obviously COVID has really um, put the movie industry on the ropes, um, but you know, um, there's nothing, nothing stops artists, you know, artists need to make art. We'll all figure out how to make it work. You well, know. Keith, I think from all of us, I can safely say you got us a Barbarella. So next film, please send it our way and we'll definitely consider it for rain dance. Now, thanks very much to all our panelists today. Uh, best of luck with Antarctica, which is a great film. I, I really have the, the best of hopes for the film. Uh, if you're an audience member, uh, if you've, uh, if you've seen this film or any other films, please consider donating five pounds towards the festival so that we can go back into a cinema next year, hopefully Piccadilly again. And uh, if you want to click on the big red button, you can or otherwise go on to raindance.org forward slash donate. Thanks for sticking around. I've been Miki La Rosa, film curator and writer. See you at the next one.